All right, for our first spring problem, we're going to look at a, uh, an analysis. So we've got a given spring. Uh, there is a little bit of calculation in terms of design parameters that go on through this, but we know the, the uh, diameter of the spring and we know the diameter of the wire. Uh, so that sort of limits the possibilities of what the spring can do, um, but we still have some calculations that go into this in terms of determining the lengths, uh, the pitch of the spring, and things like that. <clears throat> so several things are required here. Um, if you just want to pause and, and write all this down, because I'm going to shift off this scr uh, screen here in a second. But uh, starting off with basic strength calculations and then working our way through for the rest. Uh, a couple of references are, are used here. Um, that number 16 wire, that's uh, for smaller diameter wires. You often see the, the number, American number gauge system, I believe it's called, something of that nature. Um, <clears throat> Shigley A28 in the appendix has some decimal equivalents to that. Uh, if you just search for uh, for uh, on something like Google Images, you'll find charts of all this mapped out. You can just grab one of those, print it out, and then you'll you'll have all that info. Uh, we're also going to make use of Table 10.4, which is what has the strength um, calculation parameters for wires. This is a, a music wire. So we're in that very first row, and all we need out of this is the exponent m and the value of a, which will be used to calculate the ultimate strength. So I've already pulled most of this information. Uh, the wire diameter is .037 inches. A was 201,000 psi raised to the m, where m is .145. And uh, running that out, we get an SUT of 324,200. Now for these parameters, if you recall, yield strength in shear is given as a percentage of the ultimate strength, and in this case, the percentage is 45. That gives me 145,900 PSI. <clears throat> That's part A. For part B, we're asked to estimate the static load corresponding to that yield strength. And for this, we're, we're going to need some other parameters. Uh, we do need the mean coil diameter. We need C. And then we're going to calculate KB as well. Now D, that is, remember that's not the OD, it's not the ID. It's halfway through the coil diameter. So since we're given the, what are we given? We're given the OD of the part. Subtract one thickness from that, that gives you the mean coil diameter. So we have 7 sixteenths minus .037 is right around .40 inches. C is just the mean coil diameter divided by the wire diameter. It's 10.8. And the Bergstrasser factor, KB for this case, is B4C plus 2 divided by 4C minus 3. Plugging in C there, we get 1.124. And then finally, our shear stress for this is KB 8FD, where F is the force corresponding to that shear strength over pi times wire diameter cubed. So if I want the force corresponding to the yield strength itself with no factor of safety in there, I'm going to set this equal to the actual yield strength that we calculated in part A. And what we have left here our only unknown is F, so that'll be solved directly here. And that comes out to be 6.46 pounds. Alright, part C. 
It has to es estimate the scale of the spring. Uh, scale here essentially being another word for stiffness. We're just calculating the stiffness constant K. That's given as wire diameter of the fourth times the shear modulus divided by eight times the mean diameter cubed times Na, the number of active coils. G here actually, um, you can calculate that from Young's modulus, but it is tabulated for you in table 10.5 for various uh, materials and that sort of thing. And then the number of active coils is going to be 10.5 in this case. That's also a, a table resource. That's table 10.1. Remember, the number of active coils has to do with the total number of coils as well as the end conditions of the spring. And here the ends are squared. Uh, that essentially takes two turns out of the active count. So we started with 12 and a half turns, took two turns out. have a K value of 4.13 pounds per inch. For D, estimate the solid length of the spring. There's a few ways to go about, about this calculation, but if you recall that force is just the stiffness times the axial uh, displacement, which we'll call Y. Uh, we know the um, the maximum force that the spring can hold. We know the stiffness, so we can get the maximum amount of compression possible with this wire diameter. So by taking the maximum force, which was 6.46, divided by the stiffness, 4.13, got pounds over pounds per inch, which is going to give us units of inch at one dot. 5, 6 inches is equal to y. That represents the total possible displacement. Alright, from there we can calculate the rest of the dimensional parameters. E is asking for the solid length of the spring just given as LS in problems. NT plus 1 times the wire diameter. <clears throat> so the number of coils plus 1, um, you, can, you can think through that on your own, but you're stacking up the coils literally and each coil has a dimension of dot 037 and you have one extra because the ends you've got the end on either side that adds a little bit to the thickness the possible length of the spring this is a half inch F we're asking what should the spring length be to ensure that when it is compressed solid and then released there will be no permanent change in the free length. So no permanent change in the free length, all that means is it's not going to yield. So that at full compression there's no yielding occurred. So free length is given as LO. We can take it literally here as Y, the maximum possible displacement, plus the solid length. Uh, the solid length is the length when it's fully compressed, of course. If you can only compress it by Y to get there, then LO has to be at least that value. So here we've got dot .5 plus 1.56 for an LO value of 2.06. And finally, or actually we've got couple parts left. G. Given the length found, is buckling possible? 
For that, we can calculate the critical free length, and this is using some um, some values from Shigley. I don't have that that equation number written down here, but we basically want to make sure this is less than actually 2.63 times dot four over dot five, and that value is 2.06. Excuse me, 2.10. And here, since just compare those two numbers. Our spring is below the critical length, barely, but it is. So that implies that buckling would not be an issue in this, this problem. And the last part of this, see if this is still here. Yeah, what is the pitch of the coil body? Pitch would be the spacing between the coils when it is unwound. So to get that essentially you're taking the free length over the total number of coils to get the pitch. So our free length is 2.06, the total number of coils is 12.5, that's our pitch and 2.06, we get a pitch of about 0.165 inches. So that's everything in the problem. Um, we'll point out real quick that the, the calculations carried out here starting at, let's see, starting from this value, from this point on I'm essentially designing a spring that at its shut length will be right at its yield strength. So there's no factor of safety against the yield built into this at all. I could build some of that in, no problem, um, just by reducing the allowable stress. So here, when I set this equal to the yield strength, I could set that to a lower value to build in a factor of safety. Then also here on part D where I calculate this, this um, displacement um, or actually not part D but here where I calculate the shut length I calculate this um, not even part E part F and I calculate the free length um, by letting Y equal what I calculated in D again I'm producing a spring that collapses to its full shut length right at the yield strength I could I could start the free length longer if I chose to and that would just give me a larger pitch. But the pitch doesn't affect the stiffness and it doesn't particularly affect the strength values either. Uh, it has to remain within a reasonable range but it can be adjusted by changing what feeds into the free length right there. So everything in this was specifically set up to produce something that right at the shut length would be just at the yield point.